I am really special, y'all. I was just talking away and won't even record. So, this is a video I never thought that I would do or something I never thought I would talk about on YouTube. It's something I struggle with personally. This video is not sponsored. Um, there is no doctor telling me to make it. I'm making it because I want to inform people of what I have went through and what I still go through. I believe that I have PTSL, which is post... Hold on. I want to give it to y'all right. Let me get the medical term for it. It is called post-tubal ligation syndrome. I had a tubal done in 2008 when I had my seven-year-old. Yeah, he'll be eight this year. Girl, I'm getting old. Um, I had it done because I was having my fourth C-section, which made me really high risk. And I had people telling me, okay, this is your fourth C-section, doctors, you know, it's time to tie your tubes, you know, because we're getting, we're getting riskier, it's getting more risky. No one ever told me that my uterus was too thin or that, you know, I was at a higher risk for my uterus to rupture or anything like that. Now, granted, I had four children in this, and... Let's see, hold on. I'm going to give you the ages right. Let's see, at four, right? So, 2003, 2004. No, 04, 05, 06, and 08. So, in a four year period, I've had four kids. Yeah, that's a lot in four years. And so, because of that, you know, you're supposed to give your body at least a year between sections to heal. And I wasn't giving my body that time. But I was young, too. I was in my early 20s when I had these four babies. So, I got a tubal. No one ever tells you what life is like after tubal legation. And so, I want to talk about what I go through personally after my tubal. Now, granted, everybody's tubal is different. Everybody is different. Not everybody's the same. I'm not trying to get on here and scare anybody. If you feel that getting your tubes high is what you need to do, then by all means, girl, do you. But if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't do it because of the pain that I go through. First of all, this is a TMI video. Let me just say that now. This is going to be a really TMI video. If you have a weak stomach and don't like things like this, this is if you some for some reason you can be a male and you're watching my channel, this is not a video you want to watch. Um if you have a weak stomach, this might not be a video that you want to watch. I'll try to use the proper terminology that you're supposed to use and not be too ghetto with it, I guess. So let me give you a few seconds to click off because, like I said, this is going to be a TMI video. Alright, I need about 10 seconds to click off of this video. So, I had my tubal done. December 15th of 2008 after a c-section was already open on the table so they're supposed to go in and tie clip and burn my tubes um, I'm assuming they did it because I've been pregnant since my son and as y'all heard I had four in four years so I was afraid of Myrtle um so everything was fine everything was normal after my c-section you know there was no um, abnormal bleeding or anything of that nature. I would never get sick with my periods before. Like throwing up, like nauseous, vomiting, sick. Um, I had a very normal cycle. I mean, I had cramps. Everybody has cramps. But what I have now are not cramps. They feel like I am in full-blown active labor. And it is the very worst pain I've ever experienced in my life. Let me, let, me, let, me, let me back up. So my son was maybe a week and a half old and I stood on my floor and I just gushed blood everywhere. That was the first time I just, you know, it was just everywhere. And I thought, oh my God, I'm hemorrhaging, I'm dying or whatever. So it's my very first time that I thought like the abnormal bleeding or the excessive bleeding after my tubal was at a week and a half after surgery. <laughs> 
and it's never gotten better since then. I have, I normally get very nauseous before my cycle starts. I normally have a really heavy menstruation. I have the worst cramps that you've ever experienced in your whole entire life. Normally the pain starts in my back and then it goes into my belly and then it goes back into my back and taking like over the counter Tylenol or Advil or something. I take extra strength Tylenol which y'all know is either the 500 or the 1000. If it's a thousand milligrams of Tylenol I normally end up taking like another 500 and then you take two 4000 okay. So if it's the 500 I normally take like four to equal 2000 milligrams of Tylenol. Which is excessive and ridiculous. Um, yeah, there's nothing that anybody can do for me. You know, I've talked to different doctors. For the first couple of years, I suffered in silence. I didn't even talk about it. I didn't discuss how much pain I was in. I just lived with it. You know, I just figured eventually it would go away. You know, something, it wouldn't happen anymore. You know, you're ashamed to go to your OBGYN and be like, Oh my God, I'm in so much pain and I'm menstruating heavily and it's not normal it became normal to me you know it became a part of my life and what I dealt with and it's just gotten to the point that it's excessive and like sometimes some months I can't even get out of bed I'm in so much pain that I'm hitting walls and I'm punching things because the pain is so extreme and it's so bad so you know, I'm not against tubal ligation, but if you can find a different method of birth control, I would strongly suggest it. Um, my sister got a tubal done this time last year, and I told her, don't do it. It is the worst thing that you can ever do. Get an IUD or something. Don't, don't tie your tubes because it's permanent, and the pain that you go through and the bleeding that you go through, unless you got thousands of of dollars you can't fix it <laughs> you know it's funny thing is insurance will pay for you to tie your tubes and uh, they sure as heck ain't gonna pay for you untie the mugs because i thought about you know getting a tube reversal done but who has like who want buy a house we have a down payment for this house you know the money the extra money that we have has is it goes to things so who just has like fifty eight hundred dollars just sitting around Doing something with it so you can get your tubes untied. Not me. Um, so yeah. Maybe I'll update y'all as I go through this journey with my doctors to try to find some um some relief. Something they can do for me. One doctor I went to was like, We can put you on breast control and my thing was if I wanted to be on breast control, why wouldn't they got my tubes tied? You know, I did this so I don't think taking a pill or a patch or end up popping up just pregnant. You know, I have four beautiful children, had four successful C sections. I mean, I was twenty four, twenty five when I had my son. I won't thinking about oh, I'm gonna want another baby in seven, eight years. You know, I look, I watch YouTube and live vicariously through my, some people I'm subscribed to with day babies and day kids, and I get my kid fix. I look at their cute baby, like, oh, I want their baby so cute, and I keep it moving. You know, if for some reason God decided to bless me with another baby, that's up to him. I'm not out here actively trying to get pregnant and something on oh, untie my tubes to have a baby. No, if I ever get the money up to untie them, it will be to alleviate some of the pain that I go through. Y'all would not know today as it was a really, really painful day for me. I am on day four of my cycle and the pain in my stomach when I got out of the shower this morning was excruciating. It was the worst pain I've ever felt. This cycle wasn't that bad this month, you know, it wasn't, it was heavy menstruation, but it wasn't a lot of pain and cramping, you know, and so when I felt the pain, I was like, oh, what is this? I ain't felt this at all, you know, not this month. And so it was just crazy. It was crazy. That's why y'all ain't got that many videos today. I didn't get my bed to 11 o'clock. But I did my hair and my makeup today because at the end of the day, regardless of how I feel, I should look cute. It was like a mind over matter type of thing for me today. I didn't, I wanted to, you know, look cute even though I am in excruciating pain. 
and it's okay and I am so nauseous right now so nauseous the nausea that you get after a tube is ridiculous it's like having morning sickness for five days out of every month and you're not pregnant at least when you're pregnant and you get morning sickness there's a baby coming <laughs> in nine months you just get sick for nothing for free no baby coming you know, at least when you're in labor and you're hurting, you're about to have a baby. When you're hurting after a tubal, there's no baby coming. You just hurting. And then you get, to, you get the joy of knowing you get to do this again in, um, for me, 20 days. My cycle is all over the place. It comes when it wants to come. It lasts for how long it wants to last. I've had cycles sometimes two or three in a month that last seven to ten days at a time. My normal cycle is five days between 20 and 28 days every cycle with ovulation and all that great stuff so I'm still ovulating so I still have the chance of becoming pregnant even though my tubes are tied so I mean that's a great thing that it didn't make me fertile infertile so I'm still very fertile I still have a cycle but anyway so to anybody out there that's going through this and you know want somebody to talk to I'm here I'm thinking maybe I'm making a group on Google Plus called, you know, Living Life After Tubal Reversal. So I might do that, you know, I'll talk about what I go through because it's not cool. It's not fun. No one tells you these things. They tell you all the good things about getting it done, but no one prepares you for life afterwards. You know, there's no aftercare number. It's not somebody you call and say, hey, this thing is not working right. Somebody got to fix it, you know. There's nobody. It's, oh, well, call a, tubal, call a tubal reversal doctor. Who has money for that? You know, so anyway, this is my story about how I, how I have PTSL. So, if you want more information or whatever, like I said, well, I just moved some of in my insurance and trying to find a doctor and all that good stuff. So, once I do all of that and I start going to the doctors, I'll be happy to, like, update y'all on my journey with PTSL and what I do and how it works and things like that. This is my very first video and admitting that I have it. It's not something anybody really talks about. It's, you know, it's private. It's TMI. Nobody wants to discuss PTSL. But I do. I'm tired of struggling in the dark, you know. I want the medical community to admit there are problems with tubal ligation. I want insurance companies to realize that sometimes the reversal is medically necess necessary. It's not just about having a baby. It's medically nece necessary. So, with that being said, this is my first video on PTSL. I hope you find it informative. Um, if you like more information about it, inbox me, message me, ask me questions in the, in the comment section below, and I will happily answer them to the best of my abilities. I love y'all, and I'll make another video in a little bit. Alright, bye guys.